Hello world, an anonymous fugitive who has been on the run for 10 years has finally been tracked down and arrested in Mexico. Google has reached a verdict on the future of the humble URL. The world's largest dark web marketplace for stolen credentials has been raided and shut down by the FBI. And cybersecurity stocks are booming, but why? That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. After a decade on the run, the infamous anonymous hacktivist going by the name of Commander X has been caught in Mexico and deported to the US in what seems to be the first anonymous related arrest in years. The story of Commander X, otherwise known as Christopher Doyen, reads like quite an adventure. The tale starts in 2010, when Doyen organized a DDoS attack against California's Santa Cruz County website. He did this in response to the county's policy on homeless people, which prohibited them from setting up camp overnight. Doyen admits he was rather naive he explains his associates and himself didn't take any precautions to hide their web traffic or encrypt their communications. This was one decision he'd live to regret. Nine months after the DDoS attack, he was sitting behind his laptop working on an unrelated anonymous operation in a coffee shop, when suddenly his laptop was snatched from him by what turned out to be an FBI agent. This is a common tactic used by investigators in order to confiscate computers whilst they're unlocked, as the drives will be in an unencrypted state. This is similar to how Silk Road operator Ross Ulbricht was arrested in 2013. Doyen's DDoS attack knocked out the county website for just 30 minutes. You would expect this to carry pretty minor charges, a small fine, perhaps some community service at worst. However, the county claimed damages had been caused in excess of $5,000. This makes the attack a federal crime, despite the fact those damages will likely just have amounted to the cost of the time it took employees to investigate the DDoS, because of course no computer equipment is actually damaged in a DDoS attack. Faced with the prospect of a combined 15 years in federal prison along with a fine of $500,000, Doyen came to the conclusion there was no other option but to skip bail and flee the country. Initially to Canada, during which he endured a whole series of escapades in his bid to reach the Canadian border, including being attacked by bears and whatnot. I'll link the interview he did with Ars Technica, which explains that ordeal in the description. He eventually trekked from Canada to Mexico, where he put in an application for political asylum. He had been living with friends in a Mexican gated community until about a week ago, when he was arrested by authorities. We don't have many details surrounding the arrest, but one of his friends said that armed uniformed men tried to gain entry to the community by posing as DEA agents. Not having much luck, they later returned, scaled the walls, and nabbed Commander X. It all sounds pretty dramatic, and all over a county website being booted offline for 30 minutes a decade ago. I do feel sorry for the guy, I reckon he'll probably be made an example of, especially given the latest bout of cybercrime sweeping the interwebs has made the issue of hacking, or in this case DDoSing, a hell of a lot more relevant, despite his actions being completely unrelated and of course non-financially motivated. However, he hasn't helped his case by fleeing the country. Since his escape, he's done many interviews with journalists, and at one point he claimed Anonymous might well be the most powerful organization on Earth, which sounds rather bizarre. He also wrote a book whilst on the run titled Behind the Mask, an inside look at Anonymous, giving his account on the early days of Anonymous, which no doubt the FBI have combed through with great interest. Google has reached a decision on the fate of the humble URL. You see, a year ago, Google began experimenting with a new feature in Chrome, which would hide almost all of a URL from the address bar, leaving only the domain name in view. The reasoning behind this was to make it easier to spot phishing domains. Dodgy domains sometimes only differ from the real thing by a couple of characters. The logic is that when a URL consists of a couple hundred characters, those deviant domains are a little too difficult to spot. I can't say I relate with this issue, and I imagine you guys who watch my videos are also scratching your heads, but I suppose this could be an issue for less savvy people? Either way, Google has been exploring a prototype in a study. They also rolled it out to a small percentage of real Chrome users to ascertain if it actually helps them identify phishing domains. The verdict is in. Google has decided that the full fat URL will live to see another day. This comes after their experiments essentially failed, which doesn't come as much of a shock. If you know how domains work, you know the bit at the beginning is responsible for who you're actually connecting to. I can't see how removing the rest of the URL changes that. But don't rejoice just yet. This isn't the first time Google has come for our URLs, and it likely won't be the last. In 2014, Chrome implemented a similar URL cloaking feature dubbed Origin Chip. This innovation put the domain of the current site in a little box to the left of the address bar, which itself was left empty to enable quick Google searching. At the time, this was criticized as simply a ploy to draw in more Google search traffic. It also came with a few little bugs of its own, which further complicated things. 
I don't know why Google doesn't just make the domain bold. That way you get the best of both worlds. We get to keep our URLs and Google gets to scratch their rich and implement a feature no one asked for. As a side note, whilst researching for this topic, I came across a cool little URL shortening website. ShadyURL.com shortens URLs but makes them look as sus as possible. Its outputs are sometimes a little risque, but if you've got some time to kill, it's good fun to play with. And you get some good reactions when you send them to people. The world's largest dark web marketplace for stolen credentials has been shut down, courtesy of the FBI. At the time of its demise, the Slilp marketplace had 80 million username and password combos up for sale. These mapped to bank accounts, PayPal accounts, Amazon accounts, among countless others. Accounts for pretty much any site you could imagine were up for sale in exchange for crypto. These were sold as active accounts, meaning people would buy them in order to loot them, such as transferring money away from bank accounts or ordering things off Amazon at the expense of the account's owner. Slilp featured 1400 sellers. Many of these will have been malware operators, each hoovering up thousands of credentials with dodgy software. Given ransacking each account themselves would have been quite time consuming, as well as increasing the chances of them getting caught up in the law, these guys sell pilfered credentials on marketplaces like Slilp. It's estimated that the exchange of credentials on Slilp resulted in $200 million of losses in the US alone. But this sounds like a rather low figure, given that this dark website has been active since 2012. The FBI, along with their counterparts in Germany, the Netherlands and Romania, executed those server seizures. Following this, the website now hosts the famous FBI seizure banner. The details pertaining to how Slilp saw its downfall remain unknown, but we do know that a dozen people have been arrested in connection with the site. It's unlikely that the downfall of Slilp will make any large impact on the criminal underworld. Whilst it was the largest marketplace for credentials, no doubt one of the still outstanding marketplaces will soon exploit the opportunity of filling the gap in the market that the FBI have created. Usually marketplaces like Slilp are automatic, i.e. the customer receives their credentials as soon as the crypto payment is received. So presumably, unless I'm missing something, the creds should be stored in some unencrypted database, meaning the feds should be able to notify the websites that the accounts belong to that they have been compromised. Cybersecurity companies seem to be making a lot of money. Who would have thought? With all the ransomware offensives and assorted cyber attacks seemingly ravaging corporations, it's not too surprising that the companies which aim to defend against this very problem have been benefiting from the turmoil. In the last week alone, EA Games was hacked, which caused parts of their source code to be exposed, and McDonald's was hit with a data breach, which resulted in user data being stolen. Cybersecurity stocks like Cloudflare, CrowdStrike, Veronis, among others, are up, in some cases, over 10% in the last week alone. Cybersecurity solutions aren't a one-time fix for companies. The issue is a constant threat, which means a lot of recurring revenue in the form of subscriptions is being realized for the companies which aim to plug and monitor security security holes. A good example is the First Trust Cybersecurity ETF, which is a fund that essentially consists of a lot of cybersecurity stocks. By buying into this ETF, you are in essence buying into a range of different cybersecurity companies in order to mitigate the risk of buying into a single stock while still retaining the benefit of exposure to the industry at large. Over the last month, this ETF is up 10%, which just goes to show how much this whole sector is seeing a bit of a boom. Full disclosure, I do own some of this fund. So far, I've made an eye-watering 50 piece since I bought in, so excuse me while I go plan my early retirement. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tickling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how a US military contractor which works on nuclear weapons was targeted with ransomware. If you get a lot of value from this series of videos, do consider becoming a channel member. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.